Hello and welcome to HappilyEducated.com. Today we are in the yellow room, which is the same room where you could initially see nothing but studs and insulation in my first bunch of blog posts. So I'm sorry that today's post is a day late. Uh, it's been a rather hectic week. And for the next month or so, I won't be blogging at all. I'll be teaching madly at the Ithaca Suzuki Institute for two weeks, and then I'll be hiking in Colorado. But I will be posting one very special non-blog post during the month of July, so please keep an eye out for that. Now, since this is my last post for a while, I wanted to explore a question that brings together a number of ideas that I've discussed in previous posts. And the question is, when should you break the rules and when should you follow them? And the kinds of rules I'm talking about here are social norms, expectations, and laws that are possible to break rather than natural laws such as the law of gravity, which are generally unbreakable. Um, now, some rules are formal, for example, traffic violations, whereas others are informal, for example, the expectation that I not pick my nose in public. And whereas formal rules are typically enforced by police officers and the court system, informal rules are enforced by social stigma and disdain. So if I uh, double dip a chip at a party, people will say or think bad things about me, for example. Now, of course, sometimes rules are a very good thing. You know, they provide the guidelines for us to navigate social interactions, and therefore they are sort of the glue that binds society together. But sometimes rules are stupid, um, overly simplistic, or just plain wrong. And in these cases, it's worth considering whether it might be best to break them. Now, this leads me to my first point, which is, the majority of rules are man-made, and therefore, it is possible to break them. And this may seem terribly, terribly obvious, but it actually hadn't occurred to me until I learned about social constructivism and symbolic interactionism. And once I started to consider that, you know, rules are made by people, then I could think about what were the origins of all the rules that I'm supposed to follow. And in some cases, this led me to conclude that you know, in many cases, rules were designed initially by people in power to control or manipulate other people. And sometimes that me meant for me personally that I preferred not to follow the rules. And one example of this, you know, there are a lot of unwritten rules in our society about how women should dress and behave. For many women, this means they spend tons of time and energy and money on you know, clothes and cosmetics and plastic surgery and diet pills and all those sorts of things, trying to make themselves look different than they really look. And, you know, no one person is responsible for creating these rules, but they are maintained and promoted primarily by the industries that make money off them. Now, knowing this helps me feel really good about looking like a slob. It's sort of my, my little way of fighting back against corporate America. Yeah, I know that's silly, but whatever, fight the power. Um, anyway, as I talked about in my post on human agency, it's really empowering to realize that you can make decisions about how you want to live your life uh, and make choices. And in the case of rules, the decision you have to make is, are you going to break or are you going to follow the rules? Now, of course, it ha helps to have some kind of guidelines in place when making these decisions. And my personal guidelines are based on, I on an idea that I discussed in my very first blog post. And that is that knowing what my values are helps me make decisions that are in line with my values. So for example, I strongly believe in the inherent worth of all human beings, and therefore I do my best to not do anything that hurts other people. So therefore, I'm perfectly happy to follow rules that forbid me from killing, stealing, and cheating. Uh, because, well, as I explained in my post on self-determination theory, I have fully internalized these rules and therefore feel that following them is a personal choice uh, that is integrated with my sense of self. So in other words, since I want to be a person who doesn't hurt other people, I gladly abide by rules that prohibit me from hurting other people. Now, sometimes 
However, my values do allow for a bit of rule breaking or even law breaking, possibly. One fairly benign example of this is my refusal to wait for the crosswalk sign to change if no cars are coming. Uh, so long as there isn't a small child watching, it doesn't hurt anybody if I cross the street before the sign says that I'm allowed to cross the street. And I confess that I also let my dog off the leash almost every morning in a park where it is very clearly posted that dogs should be kept on leash. And you know, besides the fact that we're usually the only ones there, I feel quite confident that she will not physically hurt anybody. And I'm willing to risk annoying people for the sake of getting her some exercise. Which leads me to my next point. When deciding whether to follow or break the rules, it's important to consider the consequences of breaking the rules. Sometimes even if you disagree with a rule or you think it's silly, the rewards of breaking the rule aren't worth the consequences. And for example, although I think that citation rules are ridiculously fussy, you know, for example, you need to have your your periods here, your commas here, this word's got to be capitalized, this word's got to be in italics, and if anything is in the wrong place, it's just wrong. Um, so I think that's totally silly. But when I prepare my dissertation, I am going to carefully, carefully follow those rules, because if I don't, they won't let me graduate. So it's just in my best interest to bite my tongue and follow the rules. At other times, though, it's worth taking a stand and breaking the rules, even if you do have to suffer serious consequences. This would be true of, in the case of any rule where the rules themselves are morally dubious. And a great example of this uh, is when Rosa Parks refused to give up her bus seat to a white passenger. Now, I cannot say that I have any great examples from my own life, which probably means that I'm a moral wimp. Uh, but I'm looking for those opportunities. In summary, uh, when deciding whether to follow or break the rules, it's important to consider one, where the rules come from and who they benefit, two, whether the rules align with your personal values, and three, what the consequences of breaking the rules would be. So if the rules are silly or if they conflict with your personal values, and the consequences of breaking them are worth the rewards, then go ahead and break them. Uh, that is a choice that you are free to make. So be sure to check out the extra special video that I'll post sometime in July. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful month of July, and in, except for that one video, I will see you again in August, I hope. Thanks so much for watching today, and happy learning.